Welcome to In The Funnel. My name is Mark Cox. In The Funnel is a group of sales coaches and consultants that help B2B sales teams dramatically improve revenue. Clients come to us when revenue growth is stagnated, or their sales team is not meeting expectations, or they need to recalibrate their sales and go-to-market plan for the upcoming year. Our clients have enjoyed tremendous success working within the funnel. And please, hear it straight from them by listening to the testimonial section of this website. What they'll tell you is there's two things that make us unique and different in our space. Number one, we have a process and a methodology. First, for understanding your current state. And then second, for building your sales and go-to-market plan for the upcoming year. The second thing that makes us unique and different is that everybody within the funnel has run a material sales organization in their recent past. We're all practitioners. We don't have any theorists or teachers. And what that means is we can get in front of your sales team and run the next sales meeting or join them on their next sales call to close your next large prospect. All of us have a passion for professional, disciplined, process-driven sales, and we'd be delighted to talk to you if you're looking to grow revenue for your company. Please feel free to reach out to us through this website at info at inthefunnel.com or by telephone. Thanks for taking the time to watch this. You have to do some social listening to identify what kind of content generally are your prospects consuming. Mm. You can look at their activity and see what they're liking, what they're engaging on. There are some areas that they love infographics or eBooks. There are some that are blog posts or videos, right? Take a look at what it is that your CEOs, the, you know, what is it that your prospects, your buyers. your buyers, thank you very much, your buyers are consuming. So before you create content, take a look at that. Not only the kind of media, but also what are the hashtags they're using? What are the topics that, you know, kind of overlap with a little bit about what you do? So before you start to create original content, do a lot of social listening. Otherwise, you can start creating content. And I have a true story on this. Financial advisor started sharing great content, really high level content and started to get a lot of engagement. And then I'm working with him and we look at it and the engagement is from other financial advisors. We went, oops. Right. Right. So what happened is we started sharing content that he liked instead of content that his buyers wanted to consume. Nice. Right. And so we, and the only way we can do this is through social listening or asking, right? We do not assume. Assumption is the lowest form of knowledge. Team, I'm pretty sure the following has happened to you on LinkedIn in the last week. Doesn't matter when you're listening to this podcast, you've accepted a connection request from somebody you don't know. And immediately after that, they pitched their service to you. So you've got a request to buy something from someone you don't know for a need you don't have and a service in a company you may never have heard of before. This is happening all over LinkedIn, which is why I am so pleased to get the opportunity today to share the podcast with Bryn Tillman. Bryn is actually known as the LinkedIn Whisperer, and she's the CEO of Social Sales Link. For over a decade, Bryn's been teaching entrepreneurs, sales teams, and business leaders how to leverage LinkedIn for social selling properly. In addition, Bryn is the co-host of the Making Sales Social podcast and the author of a great book called The LinkedIn Sales Playbook, A Tactical Guide to Social Selling. Her book is so great because this podcast is so great with the tactical advice we get from Bryn. So she helps us with understanding, of course, LinkedIn is a dynamic Rolodex today. We can keep track of our connections and we can keep track of them as they move to new adventures and 20% of them do that every year. But the real magic is in our connections connections. But how we approach them 
is really, really important. And Bryn gives us a very good framework for understanding the type of relationship you have with an existing connection. And because of that, how do you appropriately reach out for perhaps a referral so that your connection can help you easily, but still feel comfortable doing it? You don't want to damage these relationships like the example I just explained about somebody pitching me as soon as I connect with them. Bryn's approach is to slow down the outreach to improve outcomes, which of course is what we all want to do in sales. We, we talk about a lot of really great tactics in today's podcast that you're going to start to apply in the way you leverage LinkedIn today. And that's whether you have the free version or the navigator version. And one of the things going to be very clear to you is uh, Bryn's counsel is about getting a result, and it really shows a lot of depth and sales expertise, which isn't surprising because she is a former sales trainer and a personal producer. So she's been through all of the traditional sales methodologies, and she's really adapting them to this new world of social selling in a super effective way. I really enjoyed speaking with Bryn about this today. I, I really need to do more learning myself in terms of uh, some of the, the skills and capabilities and tactics that she brings to the table. So everybody at In The Funnel is going to be listening to this podcast and applying some of these great techniques, and I'm sure you will too. When you listen to today's podcast, if you like it, please like and subscribe to the Selling Well podcast and tell your friends, because that really matters to us. And thank you for doing so. Here's Bryn Tillman, the LinkedIn Whisperer. Hey, Bryn, welcome to the show. I am absolutely thrilled to be here, Mark. Thanks for having me. So, so we're really excited to talk today, Bryn. Of course, you're in this super important space of leveraging LinkedIn. And, you know, some of the top sales thought leaders in the world look to you for expertise on that. So the Jeb Blunts in the world and all of these fantastic folks. But let's start here, Bryn. Tell me a little bit about your journey in professional sales. How did we get to this point? Well, you know, like most people in sales by accident, right? Like that's, that's <laughs> We hear that. that a lot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, I started off, my first real job out of college was at Dun & Bradstreet in, a, in an inbound call center. Just take, I was an order taker, right? Yeah. And I got bored order taking. So I started asking clients questions and upselling them. And I didn't even know I was doing it right. Like <laughs> I just, you know, I, I had great product training. And when I talked to someone, I'm like, Oh, you could really use this product, this, you know, this report that, and I got caught on, on audio, <laughs> you know, they record every call. Right. And, um, they pulled me in and said, I mean, it's a longer story than this, but they pulled me in and said, wow, we have hundreds of people in this call center. And you're the only one who's selling. <laughs> How are you doing it? What are you doing? And at the age of, oh, I, I think 23, I was helping them to design a training program for their call center. I also got promoted to the field where I really fell in love with sales. I can, well, we've had a couple of conversations and there's no surprise there. So, so I, you're sort of custom built for this, this life. And so you've had this journey, um, Bryn, I like this story. I don't know where I read it, but I, when I was researching for today, you were sitting across from some senior executive yeah. and they had an overflowing Rolodex. And I'm, by the way, I'm of the same generation. I remember what a Rolodex was. For those who yeah. don't, so it was some, something that held all your business cards. And yeah. by the way, it was such a big thing in those days, you'd hire salespeople who had a big Rolodex. Meaning, That's right. That was on the interview questions. That was, you know, that was a thing. Do you know a lot of people? And then you've sort of translated that into the year 2022 and say, LinkedIn is now the Rolodex and leveraging that network and Rolodex is critically important. Yeah. So there's, there's two pieces to this, right? First, it's your dynamic Rolodex. Mm. We know we know from LinkedIn that there's about a 20% turnover year over year. So the prospects that you're talking to now, you know, one out of five are leaving, right? Which is one of the reasons we teach you have to go deep and wide inside of an organization so that when your buyer does leave, you're you don't have to start over. But 
part of what's great about LinkedIn is, you know, if you had just had their business card, you know, the, their phone is now going to somebody else, the extension's going to someone else, their email's bouncing, you can't find them. But on LinkedIn, it's self-updating, right? I have mm. a new job. This is where I am. And so if we keep track of our connections and we nurture them, one of the things we have our clients do is export our connections and start to identify, did did clients move? Are they in a new place where you can sell into them, right? So, and I have, I have success story after success story about just mining your own connections and identifying from your Rolodex because it's dynamic, we get all that new, new information. The other thing that is why LinkedIn is the only sales tool I teach. I was a sales trainer at one for, for years. Mm -hmm. And I decided to really just teach LinkedIn for sales because of this one feature. It's not only the ability to search my own Rolodex, but I can search the Rolodexes of my clients and my networking partners to identify who they know and leverage that social proximity mm. to get introductions into my ideal prospects. And I believe there is not another tool out there that allows you to search and filter your connections, connections to this level and really opens up opportunities that you would never have known existed without LinkedIn. So the connections, connections. There's That's something where the match. Take. Easy for us to say. Yeah. And, you know, Brent, I think this one's so critical. You're absolutely right. An amazingly powerful tool. And I also think it's my firm belief that people actually want to help other people, but you have to make it insanely simple for them to do so. Yes. So, so we're all the same. When somebody reaches out and is looking for an introduction or some help or a reference or some coaching, we actually want to say yes to all of them. But you and me and everybody listening to this we're probably lucky to get through the three biggest things we have to get through today, let alone anything else and optional and so on and so forth. So if we can make it easy for our network to help us, they want to help us. They, they know you've done amazing work for them. So they want to help you. They know you're a fantastic partner. They want to help you. They can't do all the hard work and the thinking. Well, so I love that you said that. So the, the, there's kind of two paths I want to take on that. The first one is the traditional way of asking for a referral, which is, Mark, I am so glad we've been able to help you do X, Y, and Z. Who else do you know that we can help in the same right. way? Right. Hard. And you go, gosh, Bryn, I don't know. Like, you know, yeah. And But if someone should ask, I'm happy to refer you, right? right. And, that, and that's the making them work. The other side is asking them too early. For the introduction. Nice. Right. So if I say to you, Mark, I see you're connected to Bob. I'd like to know, Bob, can you make an introduction? You're like, I don't even know, Bob. How am I connected? And I have created a very awkward situation where I now have you saying no when you didn't want to. You wanted to say yes. Right. So we so not only do we want to make it easy, we want to make it comfortable. Nice. Right. So the question is, hey, Mark. Uh, you know, I'm not sure if you know how you're connected to Bob Woods, but I'm going to be reaching out to him in the next couple of days. And I'm wondering if you do know him, do you have any insights you might be able to share? I'm not asking. I've, I've totally taken the pressure off you. If you don't know him, I've given you permission to say it without you feeling bad. Nice. Right. So if you don't know him, that, that that's fine. But if you do, you know, I'd appreciate any insights. I'm not asking you to introduce me yet. I'm just asking for insights. So you may come back, right? <sighs> like that's the, it, and part of this, as you know, we're talking about this, it's our responsibility to slow down our outreach, to speed up the outcome. If we ask too soon, too fast, we actually do what we fear the most is we start putting our network off. We start to create a, a dissidence, uh, uh, almost an annoyance at times, right? And but and there are maybe 150 people that we're connected to that would love to help us 
But if we make it difficult or uncomfortable, we're going to like pick them off one at a time, right? Like they're going to be like, oh gosh, you know, and, and it really hurts us on many levels. So slowing it down. So Mark, I noticed you're connected to Bob Woods. I'm not sure how well you know him, but I'm looking to reach out to him in the next couple of days. Before I do, I wanted to ask you if you did know him and if you had any insights you might share. So you may come to, oh my gosh, I worked with him 10 years ago. He's a great guy. So depending on my relationship with you, Mark, one of three things, you're a client, you've experienced me, high level of credibility. I'm going to either, well, you know, that that's like the best case scenario. Mm-hmm. Next in line, you're a person in my network who knows, likes, and trusts me. You may never have hired me, but you're happy to help me. And then there's the general network. So if we ask this question to the general network, right? Mark, I noticed you're connected to Bob Woods. How well do you know him? Do you have, and you go, oh, he's a great guy. And you're generally, oh, thanks for sharing. When I reach out to him, should I tell him you said hello? Oh, sure. Bob, you know, uh, Mark Cox and I were chatting the other day, your name came, uh, chatting on LinkedIn the other day, your name came up in our conversation. He says, hello. We are now coming in at, at, from a warm market. And then I'd love to connect with you and loop you in a little bit about what we were talking about. So if you're going to actually use that, go back to, Hey, Mark, I noticed you're connected to Bob. I'm, this is why I want to reach out to him. So it's authentic, right? So I'm reaching out to Bob because I noticed they have a gap in this area. They're hiring this kind of person there. I noticed something. That's why I'm reaching out. Now, when I say I'd like to loop you in and what we were chatting about, we can, t- I can talk about the gap that I noticed. We were chatting about your gap, mm. right? And that's how we can bridge the gap, right? So, so the point of this, so then there's the next, this is someone who totally networking partner really like likes you, but I don't know if it's appropriate to put work on them. Mm-hmm. Right. And I have to feel this out. And this is for the client too. So the, the but I have to feel it out and I have to know. And I could say, you know what? Mark is such a busy guy. He's just like, I I would love his help, but I don't want to add work and have him to think that I'm a burden. Right. So now you, so now, but in this case, I want to jump on a quick call because I know you well. Hey, Mark, would you be open to a quick call? So you say, yeah, I love Bob. Yeah. Great. Oh, Awesome. Would you be open to just jump on a five minute quick call, share whatever insights you have? And as my friend, you're happy to do that. Right. So now we jump in and we have a whole conversation. And I ask you the major question. When I reach out to Bob, can I mention we chatted? Yeah. Great. Right. So Bob, Mark Mark Cox and I were chatting on the phone the other day. Mm. Your name came up in conversation and he thought it made sense for me to reach out and introduce myself, make sure that's authentic. Right. And now I've name dropped at a high level, but it's not just he says hello. He thought we should talk. Fantastic. And, right. And that works for the networking partners and for the clients. But we may come at an opportunity where I'm like, you know, I've made a couple of introductions for Mark in the past. He's made a couple for me. And I know the relation or the client has made some introductions and they've been really excited to help introduce me to people. I can ask for the introduction. And again, this is your gut. You have to make sure that you're maintaining the most important relationship is the one is your client or your networking partner. That prospect doesn't matter yet. We have to maintain the integrity and the, 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 you know, the, the, how, you know, that relationship with our existing people, right? So I have to know for sure. And I may even say, Mark, I know you're a busy guy and it's okay if you say no, but are you open to making some introductions for me? If not, I'm happy to just drop your name. You tell me what works for you. And some people will say, oh, yeah, I'll make a couple of these. Here's five names. I'll make these two. Okay. And then I'll name drop the other three. And then you send them to, you know, Mark, to make it easier for you. Do you want me to send over? 
a quick introduction paragraph that you're welcome to use. Just copy us both in an email or LinkedIn message. Oh, that'd be great. So you write it. I'd like to introduce you to Bryn Tillman. Oh, does these things, right? So, so yeah. Bryn, let's just hold there for a second. Because by the oh. way, this is total gold. And this is ex like, if, if you've just listened to the podcast and just grabbed those three things, you are way further ahead. Yeah. I just want to, I just want to go over that again. So you almost have an ABC level of how tightly connected you are. Correct. Yay. Being, Hey, existing client, they love us. They'll do anything for us. Very intimate. B, you know, know and trust each other. Um, networking partners want to help, but we've never actually worked together. And Name then C, yeah. you know, somebody in our general network that probably knows of us has some level of trust. And so the reach out is based on that level of relationship yes. that you've got. Yes. And when you're reaching out to somebody within their network, it might be, hey, Bryn says hello, lowest yeah. level. Right. You know, we were exchanging some notes on LinkedIn and Bryn says hello. Now I've got something warm foot indoor. Yes. Okay? There's a point of interest that's going to break through the wall. Second level up where we actually have a five minute chat. Yes. Uh, you know, I was just talking to Bryn. And, and so, uh, she, she, we both thought it would be great if we were to connect and then, you know, she thinks we should probably speak. And then at the highest level, it's someone they're very close to, and they actually reach out on our behalf with an intro that I actually wrote for them Two, yes. you know, two to three sentences that I actually Correct. wrote for them. Yes. Fabulous. Thanks. Fabulous. So now, and by the way, we also just learned, I'm sure people know this, but we learned you actually can go in and check out my contacts Yep. if you've got some time on your hands. And so, there are great search filters, even in the free, that can really bring it down to location, to industry. I mean, amazing ways to not just look through your thousands of connections, but bring it down to the 84. That makes sense. And, and give us some tips on those at the highest level, Bryn, whether it's on Navigator or even the free version. How yeah, we well, Navigator that? is beyond magic, but on the free version, LinkedIn hides the lead every time, literally. So if you click on the search bar and hit enter, mm -hmm. it's going to open up a whole world of filters, posts, oh, nice. people's people, products, companies, groups, events, courses, just an amazing amount. So I click on people and then all filters. You can actually just click on all filters and then there's another drop down that has all those same opportunities. I can now go ahead and click on first degree connections and take inventory of my existing connections with location, current or past company, um, service categories, title, like tons of, and this is all in the free. Now, when we get into sales navigator, there's some incredible magic in there, which is people that have posted in the last 30 days, people that changed jobs in the last 90 days. Um, you know, I mean, there, you, we could just go on and on and on. I have a financial advisor who had a huge company in his town, downsized like 30,000 people. And he was able to go in and look at all the people in his location that, that, used to work at this company, but are not currently working there, right? And was able to see all these people, I don't know, hundreds and hundreds came up that already updated, self-updated their LinkedIn that had 401ks to roll over, right? So, right. right. So there are so many, depending on what you do, there are tons of great filters, but there's a lot in the free that you do not have to buy. You have to sift through a little bit more. But the, I think there's amazing opportunities to filter inside of the LinkedIn. We call it the mothership inside yeah. of LinkedIn.com. So, so, and, and Bryn, just for everybody on the line here. So you, you mentioned two things. First of all, you know, we can get a quick look into everybody who's posted recently. Yes. Why is that important? What am I going to want to do? If you and I've had a nice exchange here and we want to keep a relationship up and I see you've posted what am I going to, of course, want to do? Oh, so, so I'm going to go again. And like, this is a three-legged stool, right? So there are the people that you want them to know who you are. Right. There are the people that knew who you are, but you like have, you've lost touch. So we want to nurture. 
And then, and then there are the active people that I'm talking to that I want to nurture, right? Got so it. There, we want to make sure that we understand that engaging is the easiest non-salesy way to get on their radar. Right. They share content because they want people to engage. I can't tell you, even high-level CEOs, when I go and I look at their content, they have four likes and two comments. Right. 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 I mean, they're not getting like it, even folks that you would think, you know, they have a huge following in uh, on other platforms. They're just not getting engagement, mostly because they don't understand the algorithm. That's a whole other story for another day. But if you go in and you like and you comment and you're you know, one of 12 people that have engaged, you're showing up in a way that's important. Now, there are a lot of really quick tips around this. Number one, comment first and then react. Okay. It helps your algorithm and their algorithm. Number one. Number two, like and comment the other comment on the other commenters. Okay. Right? So now you're showing up in a couple of different ways. The next thing that I want you to do, and this is, I know it's, it's going to seem like, oh my gosh, who has time to do this? <laughs> but I'm going to tell you, this is like absolutely huge is you go out and find another article or podcast on the topic that CEO just shared mm -hmm. and you reach out and connect now. I mean, it could if they're a first degree connection, you can send a message if they're not. And just say, thank you so much for sharing the article by Brene Brown. I recently came across a pod, be authentic. If you didn't listen to it, you came across it. Right. Right. So I came across a podcast by her on this topic. Let me know if you're interested. I'm happy to share it with you. And now we are starting conversations around their interests. It's not about us. It's not about us selling them. It's not about sending them to my content. It's just small talk around what's important to them. It's value, by the way. You've taken it's, an interest. You've made it about them. Right. And that's the difference, right? We need to slow, again, slow down our outreach to, to really speed up that outcome. The other thing we need to do at this point not at every point in the sales cycle, but at this point, we need to detach from what the prospect is worth to us and attach to what we are worth to the prospect. What kind of value can we bring them? The more value you bring, the more they want to work with you, right? That's building rapport. A lot of people say, and I say it too, but it's really not. You need to build relationships on LinkedIn. You don't. You need to build rapport on LinkedIn and then take it off of LinkedIn to build the relationship. You're never going to build a relationship on LinkedIn. You're going to start one. This is the common sense revolution that's taking place right now. And it's it's kind of funny for people of my maturity level because this is actually where we were 30 years ago. And if you're a student of this topic, this is actually where we were 100 years ago. With Dale Carnegie, Dale Carnegie and friends and influence people. It's about them. New. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's not about me and going to sales training to learn how to close. Nobody gets cajoled into anything. Correct. They work with people who add value with them for the long haul that they trust and believe are credible. Yes. It's so simple and so incredibly rare. I'm sure you get this all the time, Bryn, but the amount of spam I'm getting Ugh. from LinkedIn in mails is shocking. And about a quarter of it is from sales training companies I know. trying to sell my company sales training. And we're a sales training company. I know. And I know. Because they don't know how to search on LinkedIn either. They don't. Right? They don't. They've taken, they have no interest and they don't have lavender. They'd find one point of interest on us and go, hey, maybe we shouldn't waste the digital in mail and, or maybe we should actually know something about the person we're reaching out to before we try and spam them. Yes. This is a, LinkedIn should not be a cold calling tool. No. I, you know, one of the, and I get this at least once a week, if not more is hi Bryn. Okay. <laughs> um, noticed that your LinkedIn profile needs some work. We're happy to share with you a free audit. And I'm like, um, so I respond with, 
thanks so much for the free audit. Please let me know what I'm doing wrong. And then they come back, oh, sorry, we didn't mean to send this to you. I'm like, what are you doing? You yeah. just killed this, right? And now I do LinkedIn makeovers, but for people in my industry, a lot of people don't. They could have grown a fabulous referral partner network had they taken three minutes to know that, you know, I'm a LinkedIn trainer, right? And a lot of trainers don't do profiles. So that's a perfect opportunity, but they don't care. They look at it as cold calling. I don't care how many people hang up on me. I only care about how many people say yes. And they're using automation often. Um, and that breaks LinkedIn's agreement and can get their clients shut down. So yeah. it's yeah. it's scary. Well, there there's a lot of those automation tools, right? We won't mention them all now, but there's a lot of those automation tools. They don't, they're always a bit kludgy too. They don't work very well because they LinkedIn doesn't allow them. Mm -hmm. And so, but but you know, at the end of the day, I, I love the way you've phrased it. And and this is by the way. Um, we're going to have to write some white papers or maybe it's the title of my next book. We got, we absolutely have to have this common sense revolution that says, yeah. let's in, just increase the professionalism of this whole business discipline and stop wasting everybody's time. Hey, I'll write that with you. That sounds awesome. We should write that by the way. And I'm so, in. you know, the, um, um, Two two pod two uh, podcasts ago, maybe a few more. Sorry, they uh, the numbers. My team will correct me after this. But when Dan can I Pink name drop for a second? Please do. And be so. I'm in the middle of writing a book with Jeffrey Gittimer. Nice little yeah. red book of selling. So it's it's how social selling levels the playing field. But don't tell anyone. Don't <laughs> tell anybody. That's okay. Okay. So everybody on the podcast keeps yeah, that a secret. It's our secret. Nobody nobody heard that. Yeah. So we should think about that. But, but the, I'd love uh, to do that with you. You know, well, thank you, by the way. And and I'm getting just I'm getting massive value from this conversation, which is why I'm so excited to keep going. But but going back to this common sense revolution yeah. in sales, just adding value instead of the blind reach out, do that research, add the value, and level the playing field as a profession. Okay, so so we're really getting some amazing tips here, Brent. Give us, a, give us a couple of thoughts. By the way, we've had a couple of things we should be doing. Mm -hmm. Are there any, I, and when I was researching for today, I love the, the way you post a couple of things. You talked about five ways to get shut down on LinkedIn. What are a couple of things we should stop doing? So automation is a big one. Yeah. Connecting with too many people too fast. Good. Um, is one. And it, there are some issues with that, not just it's spammy, but if they block you and you get too many blocks, you're going to get shut down. Got it. Um, you know, it, it LinkedIn is a funny animal in that sometimes it encourages you to do things that it doesn't want you to do. Mm -hmm. And so one of them is people you may know, right? So when you, when you get to your, my network and you scroll down, there are a whole bunch of second degree connections and instinctively people are like connect, 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 right? And that will get you shut down, right? It's it's crazy because um, they're almost encouraging it. So we call getting shut down LinkedIn jail. The first time is usually <laughs> 24 hours, but after that, um, it, uh, you know, it, you can get shut down permanently. Another one is spamming in groups. So if you post something in a group and people mark it as spam, you'll get shut down really quickly. Here's another one. They're all coming to me now. <laughs> <laughs> spamming um, in groups though. There's a huge one, right? Yeah. Gang, everybody, you join the group. As soon as you engage in a conversation, you start pitching yourself, you know, you're pitching, 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 just add value. Start with adding value. Absolutely. And make that person matter. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, make them just do a little research and, and find out what they're up to engage on their stuff. This is a big one that a lot of people are doing. They're tagging too many people in a post and then a few of them untag themselves. So first of all, the moment you get untagged, LinkedIn kills your post, even from one person. It kills it. It stops showing it. Oh, wow. Okay. Right. 
So don't ever tag anyone unless they're the author or someone that is participating in this knows that it's happening. Yeah, You can get this into the inbox of people. There's a little send button. So instead of t- tagging at Mark Cox, I can hit my little um, uh, send button and type your name in the message and I can get it to your inbox and it's way less spammy, right? It's, it's hey, Mark just posted this. As a sales expert, I'd love your insights and comments. Fantastic. And now I'm asking for your participation instead of just tagging 50 million people hoping that they do this. Yeah. Too many invitations that get ignores, right? So if they ignore you, they don't even have to block as I don't know, but just simply people say, so if you're out there cold calling and you get too many, I don't knows, your account could get shut down. Um, there's, yeah. There's a huge one, everybody, by the way. Yeah. So, so I do think there's this tendency, um, Brent, if somebody's got just a little bit of knowledge on LinkedIn, they get kind of excited yeah. and they try and reach out to the whole world in a very short period of time. And again, coming back to, you know, this common sense, just, mm-hmm. just build a good network slowly. And the way yeah. you said it, that's yeah. what I was wanted to come back to, by the way, that I had my seniors moment there, slow down the outreach to speed up the outcomes. Yes. And let's look at this in a real world scenario. I walk into a trade show with a whole handful of business cards. Right. And I go table to table, person to person going, hi, I'm Bryn. Can I have your card? Hi, I'm Bryn. Can I have your card? And I come back with 85 cards and no one remembers me. And no one wants to talk to you. And no one wants to talk to me. Yeah. So what if I had six really great conversations that day with the right people and a follow-up to chat later, right? And that, and that's what, like, you've got to personalize this. Pretend that you're at a trade show. Treat the person on the other side of the message the same way you would if they were on the other side of the table. Uh, great advice. This, by the way, is the kind of advice that is, it is missing generally with folks out there with LinkedIn, outside of the LinkedIn platitudes, where apparently from one LinkedIn post, I'm going to learn how to sell professionally. Outside of that, or you've got the one silver bullet that's going to completely change the top of my pipeline. These kind of tips are absolutely critical to help differentiate you and that, that impression matters. Oh, yeah. You know, that Absolutely. first impression is is so critical. And I just love this kind of theme of make it about them, the value. What a great tip, by the way, that when you're commenting on someone's post, pointing them towards some other reference source that is a value on the same topic and subject matter, who isn't going to suddenly they say, okay, now I know what this person's like. Yes. Now, now I'm going to start following some of their content because there's value here. And by the way, if you've positioned your profile to be value centric, that your profile's goal is to convert them from a connection to a conversation. Mm -hmm. If you've done that right, believe it or not, people will book calls with you because you sent them Brene Brown content. Yeah, for sure. Right. That and and it, even though I never say that what we're doing is inbound marketing, it is all sales and prospecting. There are some inbound opportunities that happen because that have like, they're like, oh my gosh, thank you so much for sharing that Brene Brown podcast. I noticed on LinkedIn, you do this. It's actually something that we're talking about right now. Are you open to having a conversation? Okay. Yeah. (laughs) Right. Like so easy, but, but we're drawing people in and you have that happen in real life too where you hand someone your card, you have a nice rapport and they go, you know, it's funny. We're thinking about new telephone systems right Mm -hmm. now. You know, I'm wondering if you have some time to chat a little bit. Okay. Right. Like (laughs) that's an easy. Okay. Yeah. Right. Like, Oh yeah. So, but it happens, right. If we show up as a resource and we're building rapport and we're bringing value, the sale will come when the time is right. Right. Well, the, the other thing I'd, I'd love to touch on and get your opinion on, Bryn, is think of our, our web traffic. 
Now, mm-hmm. some of us spend money on getting folks to come to the website. You have good months and bad months, maybe get a couple thousand you know, folks into the website, have a peek. But LinkedIn posts, even for someone like us, we do okay with LinkedIn posts, 1,000, 1,500, couple thousand. Every post, you can get to that. So these posts, as long as it's not a pitch fest, but adding value, if we're posting today, give us a couple of tips on best practices for posting. Yeah, a um, couple things. Um, I mean, you have to decide, well, it's not a decision. You have to do some social listening to identify what kind of content generally are your prospects consuming. Mm. You can look at their activity and see what they're liking, what they're engaging on. There are some areas that they love infographics or eBooks. There are some that are blog posts or videos, right? Take a look at what it is that your CEOs, the, your your pro- CEOs, I'm thinking every prospect right. is a CEO. Right. But your, you know, what is it that your prospects, your buyers. your buyers, thank you very much, your buyers are consuming. So before you create content, take a look at that. Not only the kind of media, but also what are the hashtags they're using? What are the topics that, you know, kind of overlap with a little bit about what you do. So before you start to create original content, do a lot of social listening. Otherwise you can start creating content. And I have a true story on this. Financial advisor started sharing great content, really high level content and started to get a lot of engagement. And then I'm working with him and we look at it and the engagement is from other financial advisors. Right. We went, oops. Right. Right. So what happened is we started sharing content that he liked instead of content that his buyers wanted to consume. Nice. Right. And so we, and the only way we can do this is through social listening or asking. Right. We do not assume. Assumption is the lowest form of knowledge. Man, we're right? getting just tons of great stuff here today. That's not mine. Not all the others have been mine. Not one. Yours I got. now. It's yours now. My, it's now yours my. for a new generation. I don't know. I think it might be someone famous. They may have read it in a book. Um, oh no, I I know who it was. I was at a, it was a keynote, and I'll okay. get her name. But I I love it, and I've been using it. Me too. Um. But yeah, so so we don't want to assume when we assume we put out content that attracts the wrong people. I'm not saying it's not great content. It's just not the content to attract your buyers. So there's a lot that goes into, you know, how do we get folks? So the quality and what that content in is really important. The media in which the medium in which we're using is also important. Maybe you've got, maybe your buyer just does not have time to consume uh, an entire blog. So maybe a checklist, right? Right. Like just, you've got to really identify and then ask your current clients, would you watch this? Would you read this? Would this be a value to you? I mean, you really need to know that because a lot of people say I've been sharing content for two years. I've never gotten one sale. Well, you know, okay. The next thing is, you have to make, it's got to hit five things. There are literally five elements for a post to convert to a, an opportunity. Let's hear them. Number one, you need to resonate with your buyer. They need to immediately know that this content is for them. Many CEOs of X industry are challenged with or the number one issue CEOs from X industry is facing today is whatever it is, when I'm scrolling, I need to say that's me. Number two, you have to create enough curiosity for them to stop scrolling. Hmm. So this is for me. So the number one challenge CEOs in X industry that's holding them back from scaling their business for 2023 is, and you're like, I want to know what that is. Right. Right. And so resonate, create curiosity. Now, this is where the pressure is on. 
We need to teach them something new. Don't regurgitate what they've seen 50 times on Forbes, what they've read in 20 other places. You need to have at least, it doesn't have to be a ton. It needs to be one insight that t- that's brand new in their mindset. Fantastic. That piece, so that's only number three. Number four is that what you just taught them needs to get them thinking differently about their current solution. To go, wow, I don't have that. I'm not doing this. My guy's not doing this. My gal hasn't talked to me about that. And then the most important thing is number five, we need to create a compelling moment. We need to convert them from a lurker to an engager. You have 1,500 or 2,000 people that are looking at this and nine that are liking and five that have commented. There are way more lurkers than engagers. And it's our job in our content to get them to engage. And we ask them whether it's a comment. I'd love to, you know, I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments. Um, If you'd like a, a report in, you know, send me a message or type report in comments and I'll send you a report on X, Y, and Z. Whatever it is, we need to get them to engage because we cannot get a conversation with them until we know who they are. So those are the five elements. By the way, those five are fantastic. Those five are fantastic. And so, so uh, gang, we'll have all of these lists that are super helpful. And frankly, we thought we were pretty good at LinkedIn at in the funnel. And there's a lot of lessons that we picked up, uh, Bryn, in this conversation today. I'm telling you right now. And I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. It was so much fun to be here with you. Just spectacular value, everybody. This is one of those podcasts I actually believe, you know, that really hit the, the, the nail on the head for us. The reason we do these podcasts is because we want to help you. We want to give you some thoughts, comments, strategies, processes, tools that you can apply to you and your business and your industry the next day. And uh, there is so much out of today because Bryn has taken the time, you know, the old Mark Twain saying, I wrote you a long letter. If I had more time, I would have written you a short letter. (laughs) Bryn gave you the short letter today. So awesome stuff, Bryn. Thank you very much. And team, thank you as always for listening to the Selling Well podcast. And as I mentioned, we do this so we can improve the performance and professionalism of B2B sales and improve the lives of salespeople. That's why we exist. And we know we're not perfect at this, by the way, and we love constructive criticism. So if today was helpful for you, please like and subscribe to the Selling Well podcast. But we know there's ways I can improve what we're doing here. And so please let me know. You can email me directly at markcox at inthefunnel.com. We love feedback. And that's my personal email address. I actually check that. So give us your tips. Make us better. And we'll see everybody the next time on the Selling Well podcast. 